Hey, it's Alex Williams of the Newstack, and I am here today with Lauren Kligerman, Director of Product at Gremlin. And the topic of our tutorial and demo is this look at Gremlin Free. Uh, Gremlin launched Gremlin Free in late February. It's like chaos monkey as a service. It's a failure as a service. It's a symbian army exercise. So why don't we just get right into the demo, Lauren? I'd love to see what this service is all about. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much uh, for having me. So again, I'm Lauren, uh, Director of Product at Gremlin. We're really, our, you know, our mission is to create a more reliable internet for everyone and, and doing that through the practice of chaos engineering. And I'll just give a really quick kind of explanation on, on how we see uh, chaos engineering working. Really, it's the way to, to thoughtfully introduce failure um, into your own system through a really planned and controlled way to find those issues yourself before they cause outages in the real world, and, and that hurts your, your end user experience, which is which is all what we're looking to, to prevent. And so our co-founders, Colton and Forney, did this you know, at Amazon, Netflix, Salesforce, um, and I witnessed it uh, uh, firsthand at Google, uh, where really the only way to, to create a, a resilient system is by trying to break it on your own terms. And that's where you know, Gremlin Free comes in uh, to play, and we're really excited to get it out into, into the community to allow everyone to give this a go, right? And, and to expand on the concept of, of Chaos Monkey, where you know that's that's more of a random thing where you're randomly shutting down down instances and servers, and we are really about do uh, practice chaos engineering in a thoughtful and controlled and planned manner. Um, so let's let's dive in, and I'll show you uh, show you what we've got. So basically, if if anyone heads over to gremlin.com/slash/free, uh, this is the page you'll see, and you can go through the sign up flow in just a couple steps and create your account or your company uh, within the Gremlin system. I'm just going to flip over to what you would see uh, once you have gone through that sign-up um, process. And this is our dashboard here, where effectively uh, you can start practicing chaos engineering very quickly. The first step to, to getting started is to install the Gremlin client on one of your servers. So that could be a host or a container, a VM or a container. Container also can be included in a Kubernetes uh, deployment, and we have a Helm chart to help you do that. Uh, once your clients are installed, um, you can see them here in, in this list. And you can see the various tags that are provided to those clients. And again, if, if you'd like to kind of stop one of those clients of, of uh, functioning, you can hit that deactivate button there. And I'll talk a little bit more about those safety features. Let's, let's uh, launch a new attack and see what that's like. So first of all, I'll choose the target that I would like to affect, that I would like to impact. Um, we saw there were several on that list a second ago, and I'm going to just choose uh, the top one for now for demo purposes. If I scroll down here, I do have a random option. And this gets into the, um, the concept of I have a set of, of uh, instances I want to affect. But I want to, I want to kind of introduce a little bit of a, a sense of chaos, but still in a controlled way. right? So of those five targets, I can choose to impact one or more. I can also choose to impact a percentage. And so while I, while I start to run this attack, I can watch that set of, of uh, instances in my monitoring tool and see what happens. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to turn that back off. We're just going to affect that one, uh, that one instance. The next step is to choose the type of gremlin, we call it, that I want to you know, unleash on that instance. And so in this launch of Gremlin Free, we're really excited to provide two different types of attacks. The first one is a CPU attack here. And the second one is in the state category, and that's the shutdown attack. And that's, that's essentially similar to what, what Chaos Monkey does. You can notice the other different types of attacks possible um, if you were to talk to us um, about a paid version of the product. And the network attacks are, are quite interesting here too. And um, we can talk about that on a at another time. So back to a CPU attack. Let's give this one a go. You know, this is really about watching what happens to your instance, making sure your monitoring tool is set up properly, seeing if you can see that spike. Does your tool send you an event, send you an alert when that spike happened? Do you have an auto-scaled environment where based on your CPU usage, you want to see more instances 
start up. And when that CPU usage goes down, you want to see those instances go down as well. So it's a really great uh, attack to, to uh, see the value. Uh, yes, a question? Can you drill down any further from what you see on this screen? So drilling down in terms of uh, configuration options. Right. Yeah, so I'll, I'll talk through the, the CPU attack only has a couple options there. And I'll show, also show you what it does. And I'll show you that in our, in our uh, monitoring screen as well. So essentially for the CPU attack, you know, you, you let it know how long you want that to take place. And that's in a matter of seconds. So we'll set that to 60 as the default. And the number of cores that you want to affect on that machine. I believe it is a two core machine that we've got up and running. So I'm going to set that number to two. The next step is to let it know if you would like to run that attack right now, just uh, in the moment, or if you would like to schedule it for later. And we'll run it right now in a second, but just really quickly to show you what the options are. We can run it only once at a specific date and time, or we can run it randomly within a given time frame. Hmm. So again, we're giving you the opportunity to, to introduce some randomness, you know, some chaos, but still have it controlled. Right? And this is a great environment as well if you have a team of SREs or whatnot um, to be able to see what happens and not tell them the exact time and place when something might happen. Yes? Why do you offer it that way? What are the experiences that you've had that have, you know, providing you the kind of guidance offered in this manner? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, running it once right now is great for, you know, a game day. Everyone, everyone's got, uh, everyone's on deck. Everyone's watching the system to see what happens and, and to observe the end user experience. Uh, running it randomly within a time frame is really good for, I'd say, uh, well, several use cases. One is you want to know if your playbook is ready to go, right? You know, you have a team who are on call, they're carrying that pager, they might be woken up at 2 a.m. But what happens when they are woken up at 2 a.m.? So let's say that we want to run this randomly um, over the hours of you know 11 to 12, or even 12 to 1 when people are out to lunch, right? Are they going to do what they're supposed to do so that at 2 o'clock in the morning, they definitely know what they're doing? Another great example is around training, right? You have a new person starting your team. Typically, how do you train them? You know, you typically give them the pager when you think they're ready, right? And that can be a pretty scary experience. Um, so this is a great opportunity to have that person carry the pager again, you know, during the hours of you know 11 to 1 p.m. when they have people that help them and something happens at a somewhat random time, and they can uh, they can dive in and try to figure out the problem. Mm -hmm. Great. So I'll head back to running this right now. And when we're all ready, ready to go, I'll just hit this Unleash Gremlin button here, and we'll see what happens. So at this point in time, we will see the, the UI showing us that there is an active attack happening. It was started a few seconds ago on this uh, and is a CPU type. I'm gonna flip over to our Datadog monitoring uh, dashboard. And you'll see there are several machines or instances with these IDs being monitored here. And we'll just give it a second and you'll see the spike start to happen there. So we can see it start to go up and over time it will, uh, it will hopefully go up you know, to, uh, to close to 100% there. You can see as well on the right-hand side here, we have events coming in. And so the Gremlin product sends these events to, to Datadog specifically, telling it that an event, that, a, that an attack has started. And then again, it will tell it when it stops. And that's great for your, your monitoring tool to know that this is not an actual problem happening in your system. This is being caused by the Gremlin tool and so, you know, people don't have to start uh, jumping on board to, to try to fix an issue, but you can start to monitor and observe your system and see what it's actually doing to the experience, whether this is a backend API, whether this is a web app, um, whether this is processing a, a transaction or anything like that. And we can see that spike of CPU usage, and then we can see it start uh, to come back down. So essentially, we can coming back to the Gremlin product here to our uh, to our dashboard. We can see previously run attacks. You can see some CPU attacks were run. You can see a shutdown attack was run. And let's go back in there and just look at the options for the shutdown attack and just talk about that for a second. 
So looking at shutdown again, uh, fairly straightforward here. You can tell it the amount of time to delay before that instance or, or machine or VM or container is shut down. And then you can tell it if you'd like that instance to be rebooted, right? Should it come back up or it should just, you know, it should just go away and you won't see it again, right? And this is also a great example for an environment, you know, for, you know, for a web app. If a user is using your system, is that state held on the machine? Is it saved in a database? You know, if you're halfway through a transaction, you're buying a ticket and you're halfway through that process and that instance goes down, what happens? You know, is that credit card number saved? Is that ticket lost? All that sort of stuff. And, you know, a lot of times it's hard to know exactly what does happen in an auto scaled environment where instances come and go depending on the amount of traffic coming in. So this is a great attack to do there. If you're interested in more of our attacks, and as you can tell, well, there's a few that are great out here on the you know, process killer, time travel, great example for seeing what happens to your certificates and when they're going to expire, other resources you can starve your application of, disk, IO, and memory. And on the network side, injecting latency, uh, packet loss, black hole, and, and DNS failures to see what happens to your system. Uh, we got a button up here to contact our team and, and we'll be in touch and be happy to kind of walk you through some more scenarios. Another important uh, note, you know, we're really, really careful and, and um, focused on, on security. Simplicity and security are super relevant for us. Um, so if anything is ever going wrong um, while an attack is underway and, and you're concerned you're, you're uh, nervous that maybe one of those instances um, is actually affecting production traffic in a way that you were not intending. There is this halt button at the top. Clicking that halt button will revert all of the attacks. Um, well, they'll turn them off and revert all of the um, environments back to their safe state, back to the state that they were at before you started. So you always have a handle on that. You can always click that button. And as well, if the client that's installed on any of your instances or your host loses communication with our control plane, that, um, that will flip a switch and that will also return that um, instance back to its healthy state. Yes. So, so halt all attacks is, is there all the time? Yes, all the time. And so then if you clicked on, on the red button, then it would just revert you back to the original before you started the test? Correct. Entirely back to how it was before. Do you see that button pushed a lot? Um, that's a good question. Um, I would say no. We don't actually uh, see it pushed too much. Um, we do on occasion. Typically, you know, we help customers get up and running with what we call a game day, where we will, you know, talk through their infrastructure, their environment, talk about what attacks would be beneficial, uh, what will get the most value, and, and show the most impact. And so we try to plan those things out. We, we try to talk about increasing your black radius. So start with a small amount of time, a small number of targets, and, and expand from there. And so, you know, if, if as you go, as you increase your blast radius, you get more confident and, and hopefully you see less, uh, less impact as, as you uh, affect more things. So are these attacks increasing? Are, uh, you know, they are. We know that as a fact. But are there more cases where we're seeing where the training in, in understanding how to deploy a chaos armory can, can protect you? There's Netflix as the earliest example, and I'm curious about recent examples and how you see that. Yeah, there, there is a bunch of recent examples out there. There have been outages recently, you know, if, if you scan through the public news, and, and several of them have been simply due to a disk filling up. You know, logs filling up a disk until it's at capacity, and then, you know, the whole thing falls over. We've seen cases where injecting, you know, a half second or one second of latency, again, causes the whole system to, to fall over. If you have a, you know, a microservice call that's blocking, one system blocks another, I mean, it's a cascading failure, right? So, you know, um, we've seen many examples of this. We've also seen many customers who we run through an initial game day with and, uh, and are amazed at how many, you know, how many issues show up from some seemingly simple tests and simple attacks. And that's mm -hmm. what we're all about, right? And systems are so complex these days. There's so mm -hmm. much involved um, that it's, you know, it's, it's somewhat impossible to know what will happen in every case, in every scenario. You know, it's, 
it's it's um, true that the network, the internet out there, the network is inherently unreliable, right? You can't depend on it to not drop any packets in the floor, to not have some latency at some times, at some periods. So if you're doing anything with you know streaming video or playing a game or any sort of thing that relies on a consistent connection, you are going to see failure. It's it's going to happen. And so we'd like to help you make sure that your system can handle that gracefully and your end user experience is not impacted or they're let, you know, we let them know, right? There, there's no shame in having an app. Let the user know that, you know, there's an issue. You might be able to access some of the application, but not all of it. Um, and it will work, you know, it will come back up when, when available. And that's a great way to, to kind of fail gracefully. That's another message that we, we try to get across. So in the, in the, uh, in, in the act of failing gracefully, I have a, uh, one last question for you. Sure. Of course. So Gremlin Free, what is one thing you'd leave us with about Gremlin Free? So Gremlin Free is, is all about understanding how to start practicing chaos engineering. We think that the industry has really understood what it is and, and why you should do it. And, and now it's all about how do I get started? How do I see the impact of chaos engineering on my system? Whether you're a small little, you know, a small startup or, or you're a very, very large company with you know, dozens or hundreds of teams. Um, starting to just run a simple attack, like a like a CPU attack, like you just saw here, um, or a shutdown attack to see what happens to your you know your instances, your auto scaled instances when they disappear. This is a way to do that. No you know no credit card is required. You can install it on your own time, run an attack, and see what happens. And we would we're pretty sure that you'll see some impact there. You'll make your system better, and your customers will be more happy because of it. Wonderful. I've been joined today in this excellent demo about chaos engineering. It's a fascinating concept with distributed architecture as today. I've been getting a demo from Lauren Kligerman, Director of Product at Gremlin. Lauren, thank you so much. Great, thank you. Very happy to be here.